Hello and welcome to the Wedding Dish Podcast. Grab your fork and knife and take a seat at our table as we dish on all things weddings. As always, you'll hear stories, tips, and tricks from real couples and wedding pros about love, life, and a little bit about entrepreneurship. I am Sarah Alipin, your hostess with the mostest on The Wedding Dish and CEO of Photos from the Hardy and District Bliss. Today, we have our little Frenchy friend, Cluso, who is taking a very loud naparoo next to me, so there is a solid chance you will hear him snoring throughout this episode. Luckily, the mail already came and he already had his opportunity to attack that. Um, Before we get started, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, um, it was a question and answer episode from me. Um, And if you ever want to get your questions answered on the Wedding Dish podcast, you can submit them to us through our website on the um, Just Hit Dish With Us. It's theweddingdish.com, dish with us, and you will be able to send us your questions, stories, or whatever you have for us. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to The Wedding Dish today. Let's dish. Today, I have with me another podcast host I am very excited to be chatting with. Um, we have the ba- the host of the Baby Making Podcast, Jessica Lamb, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. We connected on Instagram and it was just, it's just was so lovely to get to know you (laughs) a little bit. Yeah, I found you on Instagram and I just loved your content and kind of binge listened to some of your episodes. So I'm excited to be here. Oh, yay. Well, thank you. And I'm really excited for you to share your story. Yeah, I'm excited too. It's still pretty fresh in my mind. So hopefully I remember everything. Awesome. Well, let's dish. Um, So I want to start with your proposal story. And the reason that I want to start here, instead of at the very beginning of your relationship, is that you have kind of an interesting but not unique experience surrounding your proposal. This is something that I often hear people go through and something that I feel like might be a little bit under discussed. Um, So can you tell us a little bit about your proposal? Yeah. So um, my now husband and I had traveled to Arizona for Thanksgiving. Um, It was just supposed to be a fun trip away, um, but we had been together for probably going on five or six years. I was like, all right, every every big trip we went on or every like nice dinner we went to, of course, they got my nails done. I looked good. So um, same (laughs) thing for this trip. Um, So we had a four-day trip in Arizona, and each day of the trip, I was like, okay, is it going to – like, I would picture these different (laughs) moments in the trip and be like, oh, my God, this would be perfect. Is he going to do it here? And then every single day, it hadn't happened, and so I was just waiting and waiting, and by, like, the third day, I was like, um – all of a sudden I got in my head and I was like, are we going to break up when we get home? (laughs) So I had, like, gotten in this whole thing where I'm like – does he not want to marry me? Like gotten this whole thing where I was like, I we're either getting engaged on this trip or we're going to break up. Like I, for whatever reason, I got it stuck in my head. Um, but then finally on the fourth day, oh, the third day, we went to Camelback Mountain um, in Arizona. And it's like this big, beautiful mountain. It's a huge hike. Um, it was one of the harder hikes that I've ever done. And um, we got up to the summit of it, and it was just a beautiful day. It had been a little gloomy through the week, and it was just a beautiful day. The sun was shining, not a cloud. It was like the perfect weather. And um, we always pack like a sandwich to go with some like chips, and we always do a trail beer at the end. So once you get to the top, you you sit down, have your beer. And um, we had found like a little spot off to the side. And I was like, oh, my God, it better happen here. If it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but so we have our lunch. We have our drinks. And then he was like, all right, let's go down. And I was like, oh, it didn't happen. So by the fourth day, I was like, all right, well, it didn't happen. I guess we'll see what happens when we get home. Um, so we had planned just a little hike. Um on a small little mountain, it only took us maybe 45 minutes to get up. Um, it was super gloomy. It was raining. And I had, was like, all right, it's not happening here. My hair was in like a bun. Actually, my hair probably looks like what it looks like now in a bun. Not super <laughs> cute. So um, <clears throat> I had I had come to the conclusion that it was not going to happen. So which was probably the best because I was like, 
somewhat unexpected. So we get to the top, we sit down, have our lunch, have our beers, and um, up comes this woman with her golden retriever, and his name was Parker. And I'm we're huge dog lovers, so I had like gotten distracted by the dog, and I'm petting the dog and asking her about him, and um, they leave. And all of a sudden, he called. I didn't notice that he had walked away. <clears throat> Sorry. I didn't notice that he had walked away and he was like, come on over. I am also a big dog lover. And in that situation, I think I probably would have done the same thing because there's a little bit of – if I was worried that, um, that you know, I, I was – heading into a potential letdown, um, then I would have probably gone for the dog comfort as well. Yeah. And I feel like it was just like the perfect happenstance. Like there was no one on this mountain. Then we saw this woman and her cute dog. Of course, they got distracted. So it was kind of perfect. That's so awesome. I love that so much. And um, so I'm a little bit – I'm wondering if you can dive a little bit into the – wondering if you thinking that you might be breaking up versus getting engaged because this is something that we again we often I hear this a lot um and I think it's something about the person's energy that is pr- planning on proposing kind of throws you and you know that it's either one or the other but you can't figure out which one it is so I'm curious if that's your experience Yeah. I mean, I totally noticed there was like kind of a shift. It was kind of hard to connect on this trip, which like we usually have no problem connecting and enjoying each other's company. Um, But this trip, it was like we were doing fun things, but it wasn't like we were connecting and I could tell something was up and I was like, it's over. Yeah. And it's so interesting because like I that we – we can't figure out, like as as humans, it's hard to figure out when something shifts, what exactly it means. And we, I love surprises, so you know, I would have made the assumption that, like, you know, I don't, I'm making an assumption that you probably also like surprises. Yeah, I like surprises, but I also like to know what's happening behind the scenes. So, like, I like to be surprised and excited, but um. That anxiety doesn't bode well for me usually. But um, yeah, my husband is such like an even guy that I knew something was up, but I couldn't really pin it at all. So um, yeah, and I think this happens for a lot of people. And um, you just get past it because like now you're engaged and it's great. But like there's that feeling that's like, oh my God, my <laughs> my life's about to change one way or another. And um, yeah, I think because we get so excited, we don't really talk about it that much. But um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting phenomenon that happens. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of why I wanted to hit it because, you know, a lot of people like when you are on that cusp of like, hopefully getting engaged where you like have the sense that that person has been ring shopping or whatever, or, you know, thinking about forever, then it's, it is really easy to fall into that. So um, I appreciate you sharing that, that story and that insight. Well, the, the additional thing that's kind of funny and kind of um, gives you a better idea of who I am, that I had fully picked out my ring, my ring, my band, um, I had it custom made. I sent it to my friend. Um, my husband, all he had to do was click the link and buy it. So I knew this was happening. It wasn't like, I mean, there was definitely a chance he could have changed his mind and not purchased the ring. And um, yeah, I just, um, for whatever reason, got it stuck in my head that it was like, it's not happening. He didn't get it. I made this custom ring for nothing. But um, But yeah, it wound up being perfect. Well, I'm glad it wound up being perfect. And you just got married, like just, just yes, got married. Yes, we just got married in June. And was it your original wedding date or did you have to reschedule for COVID purposes? Yeah, so it's funny. Everyone always asks us if we had to reschedule and we didn't. This was our original date. And all I said – so we got engaged in November of 2019. So it was shortly a couple months before COVID happened. So all I had said from the time we got engaged till beginning of COVID was like, man, I wish we could get married this summer. I'd really love to sell it. Like 2020 sounds like a cool year. I'd really love to to have it be a part of our wedding story. And I just didn't want to spend the time. It was a year and a half 
from the time we got engaged. And I was like, I just, let's just do it quick. Let's get it done. Let's do it June of 2020. And boy, am I glad we did it. Yeah, it's rescheduling a wedding is a lot of work. Um, not something that I envy people having to do. I I had some of my couples reschedule three and even four times. Um so I'm glad you did not go through that experience. Yeah, I know, I know a couple of people who had to to reschedule a few times. Um, so we were very lucky to not to not have to. Yeah, I'm so happy that you didn't have to. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your wedding day itself. Um, you got married in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Um, tell me a little bit how about how you chose that location. Yeah, so I always knew I wanted a destination wedding. My sister got married in Jamaica, and um, it was just so much fun. So I kind of knew it. There was no option to have like a quote unquote normal wedding. <clears throat> so um, I kind of always knew I wanted it, and then it was just figuring out where. And I wanted something that was a little bit different. So my sister had a beach wedding, and um, I just started. Mexico is a little bit cheaper in the world of um, destination weddings. <clears throat> So I just started looking for resorts that I felt were a little bit different. So I wound up finding this resort that was an eco resort. It was super jungly, um, like not like the entire resort was in a jungle. Um, there was a ton Ooh. of fun, yeah, a ton of fun activities to do. Um, I had my nieces and nephews on the trip, so they had a ton of stuff to do. So it wound up being like kind of the perfect location. Yeah, and Playa del Carmen, for anyone who doesn't know, is kind of just outside of Cancun would be the best way of explaining it, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's like right little... outside of Cancun, kind of near Riviera Maya. I'm not I'm not sure of the Mexico geography, but I know it's close. <laughs> we spend more time on the other side of Mexico because my in-laws live um, half time in Playa del Carmen. Oh my God, not in Playa del Carmen. That'd be awesome. And uh, Cabo? No, in Puerto Vallarta. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, the other half of their life is actually in Arizona. So oh, interesting. <laughs> Look at that. But yeah, so we kind of knew that we wanted a destination wedding. Um, so yeah, that's how we got going. I love that. I like I like one of the really fun things I think about destination weddings is that you get to have like an entire experience with the people you love um, as the couple and as the the people who are attending. And you really actually get to build friendships in a way that we don't often get to do as adults when you are a guest at a destination wedding. Yeah, I agree. And what I loved about my sister's wedding, that it was just like a week of fun and there was a wedding in the middle of it. And so um, that's what I really wanted. I just wanted it to be a big party. People enjoy, relax, have a vacation. Um and you you definitely build very unique, different relationships that you never would have done any other time. Yeah, for sure. And so what about an eco resort really drew you in? I will say the one thing that did draw me into this resort was that they had a farm on the um, property. Oh my God. It was too hot when we were there for them to have the animals at the farm. They'd only have them from like... 7 a.m. to like maybe 10 and I was I was not up and roaming by 10 so um <laughs> good so, for you yeah so um that's what drew me in and they have like it's like a rescue farm so they have rescued animals off the street and bring them to the farm um the resort is eco-friendly that's something um that's like kind of important to me too that it's like a little more earth friendly, earth conscious. Um, and yeah, this resort definitely reflected that. I love that. That's a really cool thing. And and something that I've seen um, trending up in a positive way surrounding the wedding planning world and wedding worlds, you know, wanting to be more eco-conscious. Um, and, you know, that's – you vote with your dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they had a lot of rules. I don't want to say a lot of rules, but they had like – um, no artificial flowers and no um, sprinkling of confetti just because like they want to keep it earth friendly. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad that they had some regulations surrounding keeping up with their mission because, you know, it it's easy to be like, especially when you're a venue coming out of the COVID 
year uh, and a half where you couldn't have weddings, which are generally going to be your big money makers at a venue, um, even if you have the ability to host half capacity at the hotel, it's still not going to be the same impact. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm glad we stuck with that. We definitely had um, a bigger group than typical of even destination weddings. So we expected – we invited 115, which is a lot for a destination, but we both have big families. And we knew a lot of people weren't going to come just because of COVID. Our older family members weren't going to come. Um, but with the way that it worked out during the year, we had a really low number for a good chunk of time. And we were expecting 30, maybe 40. But then as... Um, the vaccine started rolling out. People, um, some of the restrictions around um, Chicago kind of lessened. People were like itching to get out. So we wound up having 61 people at our wedding, which is crazy. That is crazy. I'm glad they were able to accommodate that. <laughs> yeah. So they'll, they'll accommodate everything. You just have to pay for it. Well, yeah. <laughs> But that's great that they had the rooms available and they were able to have everyone on site and they had a big enough space for you to enjoy your yeah. wedding. Yeah, it was kind of great. Um, we had people kind of come in different times during the week. So it was like us the first day. Some of our really close friends came in a day or two later. Family started coming. And then all of our friends and family came by our wedding was on a Friday. So they were all there by like Thursday, early Friday. So it was kind of great. That's awesome. And we all learned that we can work remotely during COVID, um, even if you, you know, work in an office traditionally. So, you know, if you needed to answer some emails while you were in Playa del Carmen, then that's okay. Like, yeah, it was totally doable. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, so I want to hear a little bit about your ceremony. Um yeah, so um, we are like very non traditional. We're not very religious. We um, didn't have anything um, like tr family traditions that we wanted to do. Um, so in Mexico, you can have a symbolic ceremony instead of like the official, official. So we got married here first and then um, did our like quote unquote symbolic at in Mexico. So um, you can choose your own officiant. So we chose our very good friend, Dwayne, to be our officiant, and he just, like, knocked it out of the park. He did – he started working on it maybe, like – so we asked him in this – we got engaged in November. I asked him in June. And then I want to say, like, Christmas time on, like, through till our wedding was already working on it. Um, so, yeah, he just made it super personalized. He talked to our parents and got some, like – dirt on us almost um <laughs> just like who we were when we were young versus who we are now it was perfect um and then he interviewed both of us did like a sit down interview asked us the same questions um and it was that part that um that kind of like brought the tears for me um yeah it was just um so personal and um yeah I wouldn't have asked for for any other way to do it we also did the it was great because we kind of got got to mold our ceremony as to what we wanted it to look like. Um, so we we let him put it all together. We gave some input. And then um, I secretly asked if we could have, instead of like the traditional vows, if we could choose a quote for each other. And, um, we would both submit them to him. We wouldn't know what they were. Um, and mine was a Ninja Turtles quote. And his was a Harry Potter quote, which is like, oh my God. Yeah, so us. So, yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> oh my God, that might be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely be um, making some cricket pro projects out of those, uh, those quotes. So, yeah, it was just so fun. And um, yeah, it was, we're very like chill, laid back. We wanted the whole week to be fun. So, that was a definite um, high point of, obviously the cer our wedding ceremony, but the high point was that it was so personal and memorable for us. That's awesome. I love that. Um, tell me a little bit, how did you choose the song that you walked down the aisle to? 
Yeah, so I um, spent a very – music is very important to me. So I took a very long time to, like, curate every music option we had. So um, I was a big Fall Out Boy fan. I shouldn't say was. I still am. Um, and so was my husband. We didn't know each other. So um, – we were just looking for songs. I was like constantly looking for acoustic versions of songs. And um, I found my favorite Fall Out Boy song is Grand Theft Autumn. And I found like an instrumental guitar version of it. And I listened to it. I'm shocked it didn't come up on my Spotify wrapped because I listened to it so much through the last year. Um, and I didn't keep it a secret from my husband. Like he knew it was coming. Um, but to to play it for six months to a year and then to to like be walking down to it just felt like so surreal to me to be like oh my god it's happening here we are so yeah it was kind of great because I you get so in the moment on your wedding day that it's like you're just passing right through almost and you're just there and it's all happening around you so for me that one of being like kind of a grounding moment to be like all right this is happening here we go like It was that I know everyone's like, take a couple seconds to like look around and be like, this is what's happening. And that wound up being that moment for me. And I would have had no idea that that was going to be it. Yeah. And you are so absolutely right. Your wedding day, you kind of do just like pass through it. You like float on through like a jellyfish. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then the other song choice for our ceremony, um, my husband walked down with our officiant so that our parents could all kind of walk down together. And, um, our officiant, our very our friend Dwayne looks like Darius Rucker, and he hates when people tell, tell him that, like hates it. So we we knew he, he was so nervous that he didn't notice when we walked down. We just told him recently, but um, did an acoustic version of a Hootie and the Blowfish song. So oh we just we just recently told him, just like you guys. So that was another thing that was just kind of funny and fun. Which song I have to know? Um, it was I only want to be with you. Yeah, it was perfect. That's hysterical. I love that so much. Um, and speaking of um, music, I I know one of your favorite moments was also your father daughter dance, and I kind of am obsessed with the fact that you use this specific song for that dance too. Yeah, so I um, chose my father daughter song before I chose any other song. Um, I knew I would be like super emotional and um, I wanted a song that wasn't going to like bring the tears. I don't I would I love butterfly kisses, but I cry the second I hear the first in- instrumental. So I don't want to be like a total mess the first first couple dances. So um yeah, same thing. I just wanted to find a song that was like very us and we list it was um Friday I'm in love by the cure. And it was just this beautiful, like, instrumental. This woman's voice was so beautiful. Um, So, yeah, I listen to it all the time. It's, like, my favorite song. And it's something that we listen to growing up all the time. Like, we listen to The Cure all the time. And then um, I got married on a Friday. So it kind of fit perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. um, And so, yeah, I I wasn't sure what it was going to be like. For the father, again, surreal. I had no idea what it was going to be like. And then um, I'd been super intentional about finding a song that was like slow to start and then like kind of picked up at the end just to avoid like the mess of tears. And um, my dad came up to dance with me. For, like they announced it. He started coming up and was crying before he got on the floor. Oh, God. And I was like, there's no chance. Like I'm crying. The pictures of um, of us dancing are so like the ugliest cry face like we have the same face we have the same cry face so um but it was it was um a very special moment for me oh my gosh I love that (laughs) that's hysterical I'm actually a little surprised my dad didn't um didn't do that to me too yeah 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 I was like well, and it's funny because it's a small group of people. So he like he was sitting down, got called up, and he started crying. Like before, he knew it was coming, so started crying. And I was like, "Come on! Like you haven't even gotten up to the floor yet. Like we haven't even <laughs> hugged yet. What is? You didn't cry when you saw me to walk me down to the ceremony, but now you're crying. Uh, it just um, did not go as I expected. Again, didn't go as I expected, but it was just kind of the perfect moment. 
That is amazing. I love that. Um, so we're going to take a super fast break on the wedding dish, but then I want to come back in and talk a little bit more about the planning process and some of the beginning parts of your day. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. We will be right back on the wedding dish. And we are back on the Wedding Dish Podcast. I, of course, am Sarah Alipin, your hostess with the mostest. And today I am dishing with the host of the Baby Making Podcast, Jessica, um, who got married in Mexico. And um, we are actually going to get into some things that we don't always talk about um, in in general in life um, that are a little bit more on the TMI side about uh, being a girl and planning for your wedding, especially in a lightweight dress. So if you are a little squeamish, just hit that skip forward button a few times, maybe like two minutes and we'll, we'll be good. And otherwise, Let's go. Tell me a little bit about the morning of your wedding. (laughs) Yes. So I was very excited to get hair and makeup going. It was a little bit of a chaotic morning, but I was excited to get to the salon, get everyone working. Um, We were about halfway through um, before Aunt Flo came to town for me. Um, (laughs) I was expecting it like two or three days after my wedding. Um, And all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, it's here. So I had brought a couple because we were going out of the country and you bring like everything you could ever need. I did pack for it um, just to be on the safe side and wound up needing it. Um, So yeah, it was unexpected. I would tell everybody to pack the supplies that you need, um, whether your period is close or not, because (laughs) you never, like nobody plans for that. I knew it was coming. Um, but it wasn't supposed to be for a few days. So, um, yeah, my advice is to pack, um, pack what you need just in case. Um, so yeah, it, it was not, um, fun. I was in a lot of pain and you can see it in our first look pictures. Um, but yeah, my, my, uh, my friends and family who were there, my, my bridesmaids and such were like, oh my God, of course this was happened to you. Like, I I can't believe it, but I can. So it was kind of like the perfect group of people to be around because they all all experience it too. And they're like, this is crazy. Of course, this would happen. So yeah, that's that. (laughs) And, you know, it is is definitely something to take into consideration. Like with my um, undergarments that I wore under my dress, I thought my dress was was like heavy enough to support wearing light a light pink undergarment not oh you no could totally see it um so i ended up like having to just wear white which was fine it just wasn't like what i had planned mm-hmm. um and i you know probably should have tested that before and tried it on but i was 28 or whatever however old i yeah, was hindsight and I, hindsight yeah I just figured dresses were thick enough to support whatever. So um, definitely being prepared for that, I think, is – it was so good that you (laughs) – Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, I was in Mexico, so my dress was a little thinner, a little lighter. So if I was leaking through, I was leaking through (laughs) and everyone would know. So um, yeah, it was not the best, but it's definitely a funny story. Um, Me and my good friends tell at bachelorette parties and such. And I'm really glad that you made it through that unscathed. (laughs) Yes, me too. Me too. Oh, my goodness. Well, outside of that, (laughs) is there anything that you would change about the wedding planning process? Um, I don't think so. I was very intentional in the beginning of planning our wedding. Obviously, I knew I already wanted a destination wedding, but um, I dabbled in wedding planning for a little while. Um, I think I did 18 weddings in like eight months. Um, so I had been through a ton of weddings. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I didn't want. Um, so yeah, I don't know that there was anything that I would change, um, about the planning process. The one thing that I would change overall is that I do wish I would have sprung for a videographer. And I tell this to everybody I know that's getting married, like consider it, it's worth it. Um, we just didn't want to spend a ton of money, frankly. And so we that was like the first thing to come off the list. Um, but after while our wedding was happening, like we were dancing on the dance floor and I was like, I'm so upset. 
I'm not going to have a video of this. Like we had so much fun. It was such a good day. And um, I definitely regret not uh, spending the extra money on a on a videographer. Yeah, I know it can get so pricey and it's hard to know whether or not you're ever going to watch it again. So that is a question I get asked a lot. Um, and honestly, the thing that I my answer is always you need to really like sit with with yourself and think, is this something I'm going to want to watch? And if it is, the answer is spend the money on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. My um my sister, um, she was like, Do you even look at your or I asked her, do you even look at your wedding pictures? And she was like, No, I don't ever look at my wedding albums. Like they have one picture hanging in their house, I think. Um, and so I was like, Yeah, I doubt we'll look either. Meanwhile, I'm like looking through our photo album like every a day or two a week, just like reminiscing about our day and um yeah if I if we did get a video I'm a little more sentimental than my sister so if we would have gotten a video I definitely would have watched it a million times by now um and then to further reinforce it my really good friend just got married a couple months ago and had a videographer and came back with a video I probably watched her video like five or six times so I definitely that's my biggest regret we have really beautiful pictures and um I'm, I'm glad we have those memories of it. Yeah. Yeah. I also tend to be a sentimental person, um, but my husband is like a huge introvert and would have never been comfortable with a video yeah, situation. I, I think um, I think mine would have been fine with it. Um, but yeah, it was just the money. We were just so shocked by the sticker price that I was like, oh, I don't know. We could buy a lot of other things with that. But um, I wish I would have figured out a way to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely, the sticker shock is real with videography. Yeah. Yeah. And it if really it's is. worth it, it's worth it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, know, you should know yourself to make that decision. And I'm sad for you that you didn't, but I'm glad you seem to have such a great memory. In yeah. I mean, it was super. Um, luckily, I have a photographic memory. So when I look at a picture that we have, I can like remember the moment that was happening. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, um, there was a lot that I wish was captured via video. But we, like I said, we have beautiful pictures that I look at very often. So um, yeah, I'm glad we have those. I, I'm super glad you have great photos too. And a, and a photographic memory is definitely helpful. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> it helps. Um, so how, how was getting guests down to Mexico? Did you have to bring on a travel agent or someone that would help coordinate that kind of thing? And how did that go? Yeah, so we um our priority for our wedding was that people had fun and that our guests traveled relatively um issue free. Obviously something's always going to happen, but um I was really intentional about the vendors that we used here that we got to choose were um like in line with who we were. My husband owns a small business, so I wanted to do a lot of people who are like up and coming and new um, entrepreneurs. So I did that with our travel agent. I just wanted everyone to have the opportunity to utilize this person. And um, frankly, she was very new. I didn't realize how new to the industry she was. And travel is like a whole other world. So if you don't know the ins and outs of travel, um, I've learned. If you don't know the ins and outs of travel, it's going to be tough to work with your clients. So um, unfortunately, we had already booked with her, with this person. Um, so we were fine to, to work with her. Um, we've traveled a good amount, um, but wound up about halfway through um, having to find a new agency. And I was like, how do I choose another agency? Like, what do you, what do you look for? And what's the priority? And <clears throat> So luckily, I was a part of a Facebook group for brides at this resort and was like, I need help. Like, who are your travel agents? Um, and wound up finding their their name is Ola Weddings. And they live in Cancun. Um, it's this husband-wife team. And they have uh, some staff. And they were incredible. They got everyone booked exactly where they wanted, when they wanted. They got some people upgrades. They were able to... Um, help me when we had some travel issues. Um, we had our flight delayed, we had our flight canceled and I was able to like, she's not her agent, but she was able to help us, um, 
she came to the resort a day before a wedding with a gift for us. And like, we weren't even clients of hers. So um, we were so grateful to have found her. And um, they just did an incredible job. Their communication was great. Um, all of our guests were happy with them. Um, so yeah, we just wanted an easy travel experience for people. And I think they definitely brought that. And they do weddings there too. So they um, go to all the different resorts and will visit and take pictures. Um, so yeah, they were just wonderful. Oh, that's so great. And we'll link out to them in the show notes because um, that's such a helpful um, tip. You know, destination weddings are can be overwhelming. Yeah. And it's a lot of moving parts and you're not there for a lot of those movements. Yeah. And a lot of people go out ahead of time to like look at different resorts to, to see if it fits what they are looking for. And we didn't. Um, I, I, I had been to a destination wedding before, so I knew they kind of like handle it all and it's it's what you make it. Um, so yeah, I know they go out sometimes to different resorts to take video for, for people if they want to see what things look like. So yes, I highly recommend um, one, using a travel agent so you don't have to worry about anything. And when your guests are like, hey, can I have information on XYZ? You can be like, send an email to this person. <laughs> they will help you. That's perfect. Um, that's amazing. I'm so glad that you were able to make that work. Yes, um, us too. What was the most important decision you made regarding your wedding? I would say the most important decision was to um, have everything be relatively stress-free. We kind of started that with the wedding or with the planning process for destination wedding due to the fact that they have like packages that you choose from. But we really wanted it to be like, like I said, fun, stress-free, travel, stress-free, vacation for everybody. So I think that was most important for us to um, to intentionally choose that, to have it be like, I mean, we were also getting married in the middle of a pandemic. It's not like we were going to get exactly everything that we wanted. Um, so we we definitely were intentional about like remaining chill, laid back. The priority was like our ceremony and reception. We're going to have fun. It'll be fine. Um, so yeah, choosing to, um, and like I said, I am kind of a, uh, anxious person. So it was definitely a, um, a test for me to be like, I haven't heard back from the resort about our DJ and we leave in two days. It was kind of crazy to me. But then once you get there, it's like, they do three weddings a day. Like your wedding will be fine. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we just were very intentional about being like, yeah, whatever happens, happens. Um, like I said, our flight got canceled going there. So by the time we got there, I was like, whatever, we're here. I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. What's meant to be, you'll be. Um, but the other thing that we decided to do was to – my husband was not interested in planning a wedding at all. So um, the one request that he made was a uh, funfetti wedding cake. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like I don't care. So we got like a, a tear um, – sprinkle wrapped funfetti cake and then we did have um someone make clay models of our dogs and it was like the best decision we ever could have made it like we have them in our house i need to do something with them but they're like look exactly like our dog right now (laughs) yeah they look exactly like our dogs they're the best um and the pictures of the dogs on our wedding cake that's like looks like a child's first birthday cake was just amazing it was it was a good it was a good decision everybody talked about it um everybody loved the picture so it was it was a good decision I love that so much um we did not have our dog when we got married but it would have been hard not to incorporate him and I'm at that I'm glad that didn't factor into you not wanting to do a destination wedding. Yes. Yeah, well, it almost did cuz we have one both of our dogs are reactive. One doesn't like people and the other one doesn't like other dogs. So we're like if we can't find somewhere to go, we're staying home. So, um we wound up finding somewhere for them to go and then we're able to to have a little um representation there. We're like big dog people. Everyone knows how much we love our dogs. So we had to incorporate them somehow. I love that. That's really fun. <laughs> I also, another incorporation that I forgot was I had um, I made little pictures of the printed out little pictures of them like quarter sized and made them into a little 
Um, it almost looks like a locket to have around my uh, floral, my bridal bouquet. So we have a picture oh, of so both cute. of the dogs. So yeah, it was a pretty cute. Um, I think only my husband saw it, honestly, which was kind of perfect also. <laughs> I can hear one of them moving in the background. It's like they know you're talking about them. Yeah, they, um, they're used to podcasting now, but it doesn't matter uh, what's happening. They're going to bark at the neighbor next door. They're going to walk around with their nails. They, they don't care. But yeah, they're sleeping right now, so I'll take it. Oh my gosh. Well, is there anything that you, any advice that you could impart upon people who are going through the wedding planning process, destination wedding or not um, dealer's choice? Yeah. I think my biggest advice is that everything is um, fixable and not worth stressing about. Like it is, it's, um, it's, it sounds bad. It's a very special day, but it's just one day. Like focus on the fun, focus on the exciting things, like the memories you're going to have. Things are going to get screwed up um, and just rolling with it and moving through it I think is the best advice I could give. Like things will happen. Everything will happen as it should. It'll all be – hindsight is twenty twenty. It'll all be funny later, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I would just say – Stay as chill as you can. They're not as as big decisions as you think they are. Um, and just enjoy your day. I tell everybody, take like a second each, like getting ready, take a minute to like sit, look around, enjoy, take a photo memory, enjoy what's happening. Ceremony, take a second. Reception or like during pictures, like just take a photo memory of what's going on because it does get hard going from thing to thing. It all moves very quickly. Um, so yeah, just take a second to like, enjoy it. I love that. That's great advice. Um, especially, you know, as you, you announced that you are an anxious person. So that is something that is even more important when, when you are anxious. Yeah, it can be done. You can be an anxious person and not have a binder of your wedding things, which I did not. I had a folder, I thought I'd have hard hard paper in a binder, um, and I didn't. So, yeah, I think just um, remembering that the priority is to have fun, to enjoy your day. Everything gets figured out um, and not to stress too much. I love that. Um, that. Well, I so appreciate you being here on The Wedding Dish with me today, Jessica. Where can people find the Baby Making Podcast and, and follow you online? Yeah, so you can find um, the Baby Making Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Um, the podcast is um, about an hour long. It's just me digging into some topics between babies and parenthood, all between it. We talk about everything. Um, you can find it anywhere you've f- listened to podcasts, um, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, um, Stitcher, all the big ones. Um, and then if you wanted to follow me personally, I am at Jessica Lamb, like the animal, L-A-M-B, on Instagram and Facebook. I'm not on a ton, but you can follow me there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the Wedding Dish podcast. Um, I highly recommend everyone follow you. It has just been such a delight and it's been so wonderful to get insight into your wedding day um, and, and just to really know how much fun you had and how much you truly enjoyed the whole process makes my heart super happy. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I Like I said, I loved our wedding day. So being able to to share it with other people, give tips and tricks, um, I'm happy to be here. And what, you get, what you're doing here is incredible. I love people being able to, to share their day. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Well, while you are following Jessica on all of the social media places, um, we are on Instagram at The Wedding Dish Podcast. I know it's long, but it's worth it. I promise. And you can find our website, theweddingdishpodcast.com to get show notes, apply to be a guest, um, share your stories, to donate to us so we can keep bringing you juicy wedding tips and tricks from couples and wedding pros alike. And you can get transcripts because we are committed to accessibility at The Wedding Dish. And 
Don't forget to tune in to our next episode and rate, review, and follow uh, The Wedding Dish wherever you grab podcasts. Until next time, cheers!